Thank you for tuning in to more quarterfinal action from the 2024 Forest City Flickers NCAA Crokinole Tournament. Sure to be another great matchup here as we have Jason Beerling on your right and Nathan Walsh to your left. This will be a race to nine elimination match. Winner will move on to the semifinals and the loser will get to watch. Jason Beerling first to act in this match. Little bit off. Weight was perfect, but just a little bit off on the line. Walsh leans to the side to try to take advantage of this heavy leaner or heavy hanger. Unable to convert, but uh, fortunately worked all the way to the outside, forcing Beerling into a peel. Nathan drains his open 20. Beerling goes long. Nathan Walsh very much in control of this first round, <laughs> although never count Jason Beerling out as he goes for that bounce back 20. He may get himself back into this round. I spoke too soon. Not that I thought he was out of it. It was just uh, Walsh was in control and it uh, a couple shots and that changed. A little bit of a jam up here. We're getting a little bit interesting. Looks like nice shot. Beerling goes through his own to achieve that valid shot and also rolls his shooter into the house. Beautiful double takeout by Walsh. That was a nice shot. Another bounce back attempt by Beerling. A little bit off. Oh, swing and a miss. Peg gets in the way. Now he's going to have to accomplish it this time in order to secure the round, which he does. Be very unusual. Look at this double takeout. That is so thin on the far side. Nice shot. Walsh first to act in round two. Sitting on a 2-0 lead in this race to nine match. Beerling pulls play back to his side of the house. Forces Walsh to try to use a peg to make something happen. Loses a shooter, opening the door for Beerling, who goes just a little bit long. We'll see if Walsh is able to convert. He's going to be looking for the... Oh, he gets the off and the 20. Well done. Beerling just a titch off on the open 20 so far in this match. Nice takeout, but definitely left that closer to the hole than he wanted to. It should be a 20, but Beerling taking his time to decide which way, because he's going to want the off as well. Oh, opted for the touch 20. What do I know? He must have felt that the off wasn't there. Walsh sitting two discs on, but against the hammer. We'll see Beerling goes for the double, doesn't quite get it, and leaves a backboard for Walsh. Walsh makes him pay for that mistake. Beerling going to be forced to peel again. See if Walsh can make this hurt. Right side of the hole. He would love the 20, but uh, all in all, decent spot. Beerling goes for that follow through. A little too heavy. Walsh would love to have pulled that back a little bit further. This is going to be a tough shot, but uh, definitely left the door open just a crack for Beerling to use a peg to draw a tie. Unable to do that. Walsh takes a 4 to nothing lead in this race to 9. See both of these competitors making some great 20 shots here. Some good strategy going on. I'm, I'm enjoying this match so far. Beerling a little, uh, little long on that, uh, on that open 20 attempt. Walsh unable to secure the off and definitely left an opening here. Oh, I thought the angle was there for that. Just a little off on that uh, touch 20. I'm not quite sure what happened there, to be honest, but uh, definitely left Beerling in an interesting spot. Walsh again unable to secure the takeout, but he's in decent position with the hammer in this round. Beerling, I think, was looking for the double there. We'll see what Walsh does. I enjoy these chess match type rounds. All kinds of discs on the outside. Situations like this that that hammer, the final shot in the round, is, is a very significant advantage. 
Walsh content to keep play on his side, knowing that with his final shot he can take the 15 and uh, should be able to, uh, if things remain a lot like they are right now, he's going to be able to uh, take out that 15 for the win just on the board in this round. Walsh content to stay on the outside, but he also looked to hide up behind the peg. And he did a pretty darn good job of it. Beerling may. Oh, Beerling went for the double. Just wasn't quite there. Hmm. Walsh went in. But pushed his shooter out. Leaving Beerling an opportunity here. Beerling's looking at all the options. Some have been known to call Jason Beerling the protractor. I th we believe he's got a protractor built right into his eye. I'm not sure if it's his left eye or right eye, but it's, pre <laughs> it's pretty darn accurate. He's looking at that option. I think he's also looking to see if he can do a double takeout. But he, he does, he's also going to need a hide. The final shot that Walsh has got there, yeah. Now all Walsh needs is a, a simple takeout to win 10-5 on the board. That's all you need, though. Say I really do enjoy those chess match type rounds. Walsh up six nothing in this race to nine, but he misses this first open twenty. We'll see what Beerling's able to do with it. Nice take out twenty. Ooh, that looked like it was going to come up short, and then it just dropped in. Players getting dialed in now. I think we even heard Beerling say, "There you go." Ooh. Comes up short, but at least he didn't leave Walsh uh, with a great setup. Now with play on the outside. There you go. Beerling doesn't even secure the takeout. He's just uh, quite happy to keep things on the outside. Knowing that Walsh would look to peel, he left Walsh's disc on so that he would be able to extend play on the outside. Nice roll away. Beerling's looking to keep things as wide outside as possible. Walsh is looking to either set up a double or set up an opportunity for him to... Oh, nice. Lose, gets rid of everything. Forces play back to the middle. He was looking to create that or an opportunity to be able to roll his shooter back into the middle. If you haven't already watched it, one of the other quarterfinal matches, uh, Slater demonstrates some fantastic play on the outside, being able to, uh, much like uh, much like Walsh just did there, keeping control on the outside. Very controlled button placement after the takeout. And uh, if you haven't watched that already, go check it out. Check out all the quarterfinal action. Semifinal action will be close behind. As Beerling gets himself on the board using this, uh, using his hammer advantage to his advantage. Beautiful, beautiful uh, double peel by Walsh there to force play back to the middle. Anyway, back to this round. Beerling first to act. Goes a little long. See what Walsh is able to do with this opportunity. Not sure if he was going for the 20 or not. The disc was definitely headed in that direction, but didn't leave it too close. Beerling pulling play a little bit closer to the center hole. Walsh looking to pull it away, which he does. He doesn't get the off, but... Uh, hmm... Beerling sits back to consider his options. Not surprised at that. Forcing play back toward the middle. See what Walsh is able to do. Hmm. Nice attempt at the follow through there by Beerling. Walsh deciding if there's a 20 or if he's going to make the defensive play. Looks like defense is on the menu today. Here we go. Beerling with an opportunity to drift. Jammed up on him a little. Walsh very much in control at this point. He likely will hit and stick to keep two discs on. Beerling looking for the double. Wasn't quite there for him. If Walsh is able to drain this open 20, it'll pretty much seal... He didn't get it, but he's still in really good position. Two discs on. Beerling going to be looking for a double. Beerling in Hail Mary zone at this point. 
needing a big, big shot to get back in control. He's going to be looking for a double takeout 20. So close. He got two-thirds of what he wanted. Now all Walsh needs is to secure a takeout here. 20 was just uh, extra good fun. Walsh taking a commanding lead in this match, up 8-2 to two in this race to 9. Beerling with his back to the wall. At least Beerling has hammer in this, in this round. Walsh putting pressure on with that open 20. Beerling first to miss and leaves the backboard for Walsh. That hanger was a little bit heavy. It, was, it certainly wasn't a gimme. Mm, so close. Walsh unable to convert for the 20, but uh, rolled to a pretty favorable position. See if Beerling's going to try to play possum and hide behind a peg on his side of the board. Decent hide. It uh, opens the door for an error from Walsh, but he's not falling for that trickery. He gets the takeout. Beerling pushing for a much-needed 20. Unable to get it. Walsh, let's see if he's just looking to... Oh, he was looking to roll away, but not that far. Beerling with an opportunity to get back into this, but comes up a little bit short. Walsh driving even more pressure on. Beerling finds his range now. Walsh already secured one point and the win. That's all he needs, but this... He's going to get, uh, yes, he has secured the win. <laughs> Beerling realizes that even if he gets a bounce back 20 off of that, it would still be a tied round for a match finale for Walsh. Congratulations, Nathan Walsh, moving on to the semifinals. Like I say, like, share, subscribe. Tune in for more great Crokinole action coming from this tournament and many other going forward. Make it a fantastic day.